First off, let's get to this stuff in Alberta. So Alberta unveils changes to parental consent rules, transgender sports. The changes were unveiled by Premier Daniel Smith in a video posted to social media on Wednesday afternoon. And there's a lot of talk about, oh, this is political. And, you know, and of course, there's been a bunch of moves like this in, I think, about 14 American states. And uh, the Canadian media hates anything conservative, especially in the United States, they're obsessed with it, and then they like to try and transfer their loathing and hatred onto anything Canadian conservative. But in any case, let's keep going. All right, so the Alberta government unveiled a series of new policies regarding children and LGBTQ rights on Wednesday, including bans on gender reassignment surgery for those aged under 17 and on hormone therapy for children aged 15 and under as well as limits on sports participation of transgender athletes. The changes were unveiled by Premier Daniel Smith in a video posted to social media on Wednesday afternoon. So we're not going to watch that whole video. We're just going to go over the major points here. So what are the policies? Minors aged 17 and uh, well it's yet yeah, 17 and under are not permitted to undergo top and bottom gender surgeries. And I don't really feel like top and bottom surgeries really does describe it right i don't think it does justice to what they actually do to children right I, i'm not sure that that top and bottom surgery doesn't sound like that big of a deal does it i mean you know top surgery is double mastectomy well that seems like kind of a big deal if you change your mind well there goes breastfeeding right i mean it seems like but again this is the way that we're manipulated top and bottom surgeries no, there's a whole world of horror involved in those words. They're not, these are euphemisms. That's what the word is. I guess this is what the word euphemism was made for. Anyway, uh, minors aged 17, so under 18 are not permitted to be, um, they're not permitted to be, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, mutilated, that's the word. They're not allowed to be mutilated. They're not allowed to be sacrificed to the gender gods. You know, I have to say, it was a, I was thinking about this earlier, is that there seems to be some similarities to me to child sacrifice from, from ancient civilization, like in the, like in uh, Central America, you know, they would throw around, they would throw children into cenotes, into those deep wells, you know, for like the rain god. There were a number of, you know, a, a number of uses for child sacrifice in the ancient world, all over the ancient world, you know, warding off evil spirits and all kinds of stuff. It feels kind of similar to that because all this gender stuff is not, I mean, there's no actual concrete evidence behind any of it. It's, it's this, the, the, the gender itself has been redefined into this abstract concept, this metaphysical concept, right? If you've got infinite numbers of genders, if you've got infinite numbers of something, right, and they can include frog, ge frog gender or omnigender, which is all genders, if you've got something like that, that's a red flag that it's not real. But, and maybe you shouldn't be basing people's medical and health decisions on something that's you know, pretty clearly made up. It feels like a lot of this is to, I mean, genuinely, it feels like it's to satisfy some sort of like, some sort of gender gods that they worship, that the left now worships. You know, this is what's become God for them. You know, gender is now the progressive soul. And this is these are all just articles of faith. None of it makes any fucking sense. Again, I've said this a million times. I'm going to tell you guys again. How can gender be a social construct and also uh, like a six-year-old be born in the wrong body or anybody be born in the wrong body? None of this makes sense. It's completely incoherent. It's a religion, and these are all articles of faith. Let's see. <clears throat> William says that brainwashing by school boards and teachers. Yeah, I mean, well, obviously, there's a deep level of indoctrination here, and we see it in the language itself. I mean, the, the language is carefully kind of engineered, like top and bottom surgery or gender-affirming care. And what does gender affirming care mean exactly? Well, there it goes under the assumption that if a child says, I think I'm born in the wrong body, that they they therefore are 
that it's a self-diagnosis. That is what that is at the center of gender affirming care. It's self-diagnosis by the person. In this case, we're talking children, right? And then you just simply must go along under the assumption that they're correct and that this is all real and there is no other reasons for their confusion. So I'm saying that I I, I don't I don't feel like there's that much difference between the ancient child sacrifice and this. Let's see. So children aged 15 and under will not be permitted to either use puberty blockers or undergo hormone therapy for the purpose of gender reassignment or affirmation, save for those who have already begun treatment. So if you are 15 or under and you've already started this, your parents have already put you on this road, um, well, you, they, you can keep doing it. So this is extremely moderate policy here. I mean, I think it's kind of crazy to have any 15 year old under, you know, on puberty blockers or hormone therapy. That's it just the whole thing just seems completely insane to me. Those aged 16 and 17 will be permitted to commence hormone therapies for gender reassignment and affirmation purposes, Smith said, so long as they are deemed mature enough to make these decisions and also have parental, uh, physician, and psychologist approval. Well, the only one that matters here is parental because in Canada, um, physicians and psychologists, that's just a rubber stamp. The official policy in Canada is a gender affirming, which means you just say yes and when, and here's a prescription. So these last two don't mean anything. Really, it just comes down to parents. The government will now require parents to be notified and opt in for each instance a teacher intends to give formal instructions on gender identity, sexual orient orientation, and human sexuality. It will require parental notification and consent for a school to alter the name or pronouns of a child aged 15 and under while notification is required for 16 or 17-year-olds. So parental rights here, par parents have to be informed when they're socially transitioning. So if they're changing the name, their pronouns, or how they dress, that's social transitioning. Parents need to know. They need to know when they want to preach their, um, their gender uh, propaganda to their kids so they can opt out from it. Uh, no hormone therapies or puberty blockers for those aged um, 15 and under. Let's make we get sure we got all this straight. So yeah, 15 and under not be able to use puberty blockers or undergo hormone therapy, uh, except for those who've already uh, had treatment. Those age 16, 17 will be permitted to commence hormone therapies for gender reassignment and affirmation purposes, so long as they are deemed mature enough for those decisions. And it also bans, um, it also bans uh, minors age 17 and under top and bottom surgeries, which seems like a perfectly reasonable thing to do for young people who can't possibly understand the consequences of these decisions because they just simply haven't grown into their adult bodies and brains yet. Brains being an important part of that. So it all sounds reasonable to me. Now let's take a look at a reason why this might be important. These kinds of decisions might be important. I'll never have my breast back. A reconstruction will do nothing for me and it might make things worse actually because I'm I've I've had some complications pop up this year with the grafts. They I have to cover them up, them up with bandages or else they they'll I don't know what's going on with them. I tried to consult my surgeon about it and she didn't really didn't really didn't really investigate. He gave me advice that made my the complications worse even and actually temporarily gave me an infection, but I have to wear, I have to bandage up every day so that it doesn't like leak all over my clothing or bedding. And Jesus. from the, from the, the hormones and blockers, um, I've been experiencing some joint pains, mainly in my, my arms, my legs and my back. And, uh, yep. I I still have issues with my my urinary tract. I have to use the, re the restroom pretty frequently, and I didn't even know that this was possible. This is like a pretty huge quality of life issue that I'm experiencing, and I'm just I'm just not really getting any help for it. And on top of that, 
I'm, I do, I do hate to speak about it, but I'm experiencing sexual dysfunction at the age of 18. That's something that women usually go through when, when they're in their 40s to 50s. Right, right. How was I supposed to know? So, so let's talk for a moment about how you got your lawyers and where you are on the legal battlefront. So, not only is... So that's Chloe Cole, and she was told, her, her doctors told her parents that when she was, I think, 14, that, uh, well, the question was, would you rather have a dead daughter or a live son? That was what was posed to the parents. Okay, so that's gender-affirming care. That's what they call gender-affirming care. And that is heartbreaking and tragic. Uh, any sane people can see that. You know, any sane person will listen to that and go, okay, you know what, maybe caution should be advised here instead of just rushing it through. It's just as if, instead of just pretending, pretending that, every bit of propaganda is real. I mean, it's just common sense, isn't it? I mean, if the cure for suicidal ideation is uh, mutilation, maybe that's not the cure. You know, I, maybe that's not going to, I, I know I'm going out on a limb here. It sounds crazy. Maybe not mutilating children is, is a better idea. You know, maybe that will, <clears throat> maybe not mutilating children, um, might lead to better outcomes for them as opposed to mutilating them for the sake of some, you know, gender religion. I, I, that's why I feel like I'm in, half the time I feel like I'm in an alternate universe. This is so obvious. You know, they keep saying it's going to, you know, they, acting as if every kid who's confused or going along with what frankly looks like a fad. I mean, this isn't something we've been grappling with for decades, right? It feels like this all started coming to the fore. I mean, you know, a week ago, you know, it's been a few years, I guess. So it's just, it's bizarre to see like almost the entire Canadian media acting as if these very, you know, very moderate ideas about restricting life changing, life changing treatments, I guess we'll call them on children who can't possibly understand the consequences of what they're doing or what they're going to be like in 10 years or five years or 20 years, they're freaking out because in Alberta, nobody's going to be able to mutilate children. And I'm telling you, people like this, people like Chloe Cole here, they don't get any airtime on Canadian news. Not interested. Why? Well, you know why? You just watched it with me. That's why. Because it may, it might make people question their narratives and their political goals. People might say, hold on a second. Okay, wait a second. This isn't what they told me this was all about. You thought this was all wonderful rainbows and stuff. No, there's, there are many stories like, like this. There's a long trail of tragic stories of broken lives, of young people. Young people who were fooled by adults. Anyway, where was I going with that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's like an alternate reality when you see, when you see an enti entire institutions that have just gone for something that is clearly insane. Uh, let's see, Liberal Party. So here's from the Liberal Party of Canada, Justin Trudeau's party. Pierre Polyev, that's the leader of the Conservative Party of Canada, and his conservatives remain silent on policies that harm the LGBTQ2 community. Again, I don't see what the L's, the G's, the B's, or the Q's have to do with any of this. But again, they 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 create this pseudo group, this pseudo group, which is not, they're not all the same. They're not all the same thing. They don't all have the same interests, but they create this thing to try and give it more power. We will keep fighting for a safe and inclusive future for all Canadians. 
is it really safe though to be giving teenagers double mastectomies to giving them puberty blockers so that their bodies will never form properly sterilizing kids is that really the safe future for all canadians i, I don't know i mean it doesn't feel like that to me the federal conservative party advised its mps not to comment publicly on alberta's new transgender medical care and education policies so what really happened okay so let's take a look here here's what um from the globe and mail here's what probably have here, here's the instruct actual instructions to the conservative mps parents should be it notes that parents should be the decision makers on how they raise their kids okay that's obviously common sense the internal email then goes on to highlight that provincial governments have jurisdictions over areas such as education and healthcare, and says premier should be left to determine policies in those spheres uh the right of adults to exercise their freedoms and live how they want to perfectly reasonable all canadians deserve respect regardless of factors including but not limited to sexuality and gender identity this is all perfectly reasonable Daniel Smith believes Alberta UCP policies on trans youth are supportive. Alberta Premier Daniel Smith stood behind her government's recently announced policies regarding transgender youth, gender affirming care, sex education, and parental notification. And so we've been through this. She said, we are supporting kids in the right to make decisions, uh, decisions about their own journey at a time when they're mature enough to make those decisions. So when they're not actually children. <laughs> Although still you've got 16 and 17 year olds that are able to take puberty, you know, puberty blockers and cross sex hormones. So, which I still think is an abomination, but you know, let's see, age 16 is when they can begin hormone therapies and age 18 is when they'll be able to commence top and bottom surgery. I imagine there are a lot of people who are going to be 19 or 20 or 25. who are gonna look back and think, thank God, Thank God I couldn't do that in Alberta. Thank God. Uh, we just think that the responsible way of approaching this issue is so that kids are not precluded from all the future choices that come to them when they decide to make the decision to, that's going to have potentially serious ramifications on their reproductive health. That's common sense, is it not? I mean, that's it's much more <laughs> that's that's much more rational than oh, just sterilize them, <laughs> you know. That kid's 12. They know what they're doing. It sure seems kind of obvious, you know, especially, you know, you can't, you know, you know a 14 year old can't go buy a pack of smokes or a case of beer. You know, they can't drive yet. There's so many things that we just wouldn't trust them with. Why this one thing, this one thing, you know, it's just truly, it's alternate reality stuff, different timeline stuff. Quote, I am confident that Albertans do not want children to make irreversible decisions that impact their reproductive health. I'm confident that they don't think those are child decisions to make and those are adult decisions to make. I'm also confident that parents love their kids and they want to know what's going on with their kids. It doesn't matter what perspective they come from. They want to make sure they're walking the journey with their child every step of the way. And this is, of course, regarding schools having to inform parents of any anything that's happening with gen, their child's gender at school if they're socially transitioning using different names or whatever the first steps on to um the first steps to a life of permanent medicalization let's see aj mclean says officially child abuse is if any of these parents let their kids do this you know i don't see any way that it's not that I really can't, given the fact that these children can't possibly consent. They can't meaningfully consent to any of this stuff. They just simply can't know what they will be thinking in five years or 10 years or when they've actually grown into their adult body and when their brains have actually matured, which doesn't even, their brains don't actually fully stop uh, forming and arranging themselves until they're in their mid twenties, for God's sakes. I think that explains why I was such an idiot when I was 24. I don't know. Um, all those parents need their heads checked. Yeah, I agree. It's it's actually baffling to me. It's it's baffling to me how any parent could fall for that. Even even like with um, Chloe Cole here, who we heard from with her heartbreaking story 
You know, her parents were told that, uh, again, the question posed to them was, would you rather have a dead daughter or a live son, right? Even under that kind of pressure, and I mean, it's horrifying, right? Incredibly irresponsible. Whoever said that should never practice medicine again, in my opinion. But even with that, that kind of traumatic statement, still, still, you should still know better. It's such an insanely reckless thing to do. Let's see. Okay, so here's some some polling that you might find interesting. Vast majority says schools should inform parents if children wish to change their pronouns or split over the issue of parental consent. So let's take a look. So this is a Canadian poll. Overall, for the entire country, you can see there's some difference between provinces here, but overall, at the very least, parents must be informed if their child wants to identify differently. You've got 78% across the country, which, to be honest, I'm surprised it's that low. I'm surprised it's that low. But And again, it's it's different in different areas here. Saskatchewan is, is, much, is higher. That's 86%. Parents must be informed and give consent for this change. It's, it's 43, 46, 43, 40, 43% overall in Canada. 46, 43, 50% in Saskatchewan, Manitoba, almost 50%. Yet I'm very surprised that that's not higher. But at the very least, parents must be informed if their child wants uh, to identify differently is like 78% across Canada. So I, I kind of feel like as much as the Canadian mainstream legacy media is wailing and crying and freaking out and pretending that uh, this is very unpopular, no, I don't think this is unpopular. No matter how much, I mean, I, we're starting to see, I think, the breakdown of, of the effect, uh, you know, of, of how effective media programming can be. Because I'm telling you, the Canadian media would be, they would just trans every kid in Canada tomorrow if they could. And they'd spend the rest of their life celebrating it. Now, of course, we have Trudeau here. Now, Trudeau sees this as a wedge issue. He thinks this will benefit him politically, which is why he does anything. He thinks it'll benefit him politically. Shall we hear what he has to say? Canadian parents love their kids, and we want the very best for them and we want them to be kept safe. LGBT youth across this country are among the most vulnerable to homelessness, to... Among the most vulnerable. Well, first off, it's not LGBT, it's just T. So it's a subset of T, and the subset is children, and they're vulnerable, and his solution is to mutilate them. So that's Trudeau suicide to a range of things that can harm them we need to be there to defend them we need to be there to protect them and i know canadians across the country are doing just that it is telling that the week after welcoming uh, far-right american conservative tucker carlson oh, to her province to sit with him on stage Danielle Smith has now moved forward with the most anti-LGBT policies of anywhere in the country. Canadians need to know that the federal government uh, and uh, all Canadians uh, will be there to protect youth. All Canadians will. Be okay, well, not all Canadians want to mutilate you or sterilize you, right, before you can possibly have informed consent on any of that. AJ McLean says, we'll look back on this in 50 years and realize how dumb this was. I think it's going to be a lot shorter than that. I think it's going to be like five years. Nobody's going to want to admit being for this stuff in five years, I don't think, because by that point, we're going to start seeing the tsunami of lawsuits. It's already starting in other countries, right? There's a report out of the UK from the Tavistock Gender Clinic where there's a thousand families planning to sue that clinic. And because of what they'd done to their children, essentially saying they had rushed us into it and they hadn't given us, uh, they hadn't informed us correctly to give informed consent for any of that. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be a lot sooner. There's going to be a tsunami of lawsuits of people 
saying now adults saying why uh, demanding you know like wh why did you allow this to happen this is clear malpractice this was wrong there was never any scientific evidence backing any of this up this was just a cult and the people that were supposed to be protecting us didn't they hurt us there's it's not going to be 50 i'm telling you it's not going to be 50 years it's going to be a lot sooner than that because when you when the official position of a country is affirming care which it is everywhere outside of alberta now um of course you're going to have lots of confused kids being rushed into something they don't understand and being celebrated for it and getting a lot of attention for it and a lot of positive peer pressure from it and of course you're going to have a lot of people making terrible a lot of kids making terrible terrible mistakes because there's no guardrails there's nobody to tell them there's nobody along that in that whole path towards medicalization to tell them, hey, hold on, it, this might not be what you think it is. Let's stop. Let's stop right now. Before we get into any puberty blockers or cross-sex hormones or surgeries, let's let's talk. Let's get let's maybe get a psychologist in. Let's have you. Let's get some um, therapy, perhaps like some um, some counseling. Maybe let's look at some other underlying possible causes for your discomfort. <clears throat> There's going to be a landslide of lawsuits coming from this. Mark my words. It will always be there to protect uh, the most vulnerable. Uh it's just the the grossest cretin. I, 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 to be honest, I find it hard to listen to him. I find it hard to listen to him. Every word that comes out of his mouth is calculated and cynical and a lie. I find it so difficult to listen to this man. And many, many Canadians actually say the exact same thing. They can't stand hearing them, hearing him. It's like nails on a chalkboard, because you know it's all just fucking evil. <laughs> and I'm sorry, but uh, I'm not sorry. No, he's. this is a bad human being, Justin Trudeau. Even this is just, uh, I mean, how much does he believe in it? How much is he part of the gender cult, really? I'm not convinced that he is, he really believes anything that he says. I think he... I think he would have been, I think he would have done great in Nazi Germany. For one thing, you know, fascism is a left wing movement too, so he would have fit right in. I just think he says what he has to say to, you know, in his, to keep and grasp onto power. Increasing number of European nations adopt a more cautious approach to gender affirming care for minors. Again, we got to get rid of these, uh, these euphemisms like gender affirming care. AJ McLean says, we're talking about uh, Trudeau here. My friends, are, my lefty friends are sick of him too. Yeah, I've got a friend who's, you know, lifelong liberal, will not vote for him again. I don't know if he's going to vote for uh, the conservatives, but he's not voting for Trudeau. He's not very popular. He's actually less popular in Canada than Trump is in Canada, which is amazing, considering the, I mean, when you consider the, tsunami of propaganda that comes out of Canadian media about anything American conservative. That's astonishing, especially Trump. But let's get back to here. So increasing number of European nations adopt a more cautious approach to gender affirming care for minors. Again, I hate that fucking euphemism. Increasingly, European nations are adopting a more cautious approach to gender affirming care among minors. In March, for example, the Norwegian Healthcare Investigation Board announced it would revise its current clinical recommendations with respect to gender-affirming care for minors. The updated guidelines would restrict the use of puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, and transition-related surgery to clinical research settings. Norway joins other European nations such as Finland, Sweden, and the UK. This is happening in other countries too. I believe France is also going in the same direction. And these are all countries that were ahead of the curve on this stuff. <clears throat> originally in, in terms of actually doing this shit and now they've they've taken a look at the data and they've they're taking a step back and going oh, uh, actually we're causing harm this is actually hurting children not helping them there's no evidence that it's helping in fact it's making things worse you know the things that they're warning about will happen if you don't do it if you don't sterilize and mutilate children right uh, they're actually more likely to happen if you do that. So, which, I mean, again, it shouldn't really come as a surprise to anybody. It's just kind of common fucking sense. 
I mentioned the Tavistock Gender Clinic could face mass legal action. This is from uh, uh, June 2023. From 1,000 families of children who claim they were rushed into taking life-altering puberty blockers weeks after NHS shut it down in wake of damning report. Many of them were prescribed powerful drugs to delay onset of adolescence. I mean, it again, do you ever, are you ever seeing something like this and you, you, you have to stop and go, wait a second, this is real? Prescribed powerful drugs to delay onset of adolescence. Well, what would be the purpose of that? It's so that they can kind of stunt their growth so that then they can surgically turn them into looking more like the thing that they can never actually be. And by the way, there's the end of the bloodline too, because no kids after that. I mean, how can that be real? But never, never any word of any of this stuff, any of the stuff that's happening in Europe, you would not know about this in Canada. A lot of re reason why stupid people, why credulous people, or just people with no conscience support this stuff in places like Canada is because they just don't hear about, they don't hear from the detransitioners, they don't hear about any of this. They don't hear about other countries like Sweden reversing course in the Sweden, right? Isn't that like the North Americans, like socialist dream? Nothing could ever be as good as Sweden. Well, you know, they no longer agree with you on all of this gender stuff to their credit.